Welcome to Bite at a Time Books Behind the Story, where we answer the questions you have about your favorite classic authors. What inspired your favorite author to write their novels? What was going on in the world at the time? Follow along with us as we tell you what was happening in the world while your favorite authors wrote your favorite classics. My name is Bree Carlisle, and I love to read and wanted to share my passion with listeners like you. If you want to know what's coming next and vote on upcoming books, sign up for our newsletter at biteatatimebooks.com. Be sure to follow my show on your favorite podcast platform so you get all the new episodes. You can find most of our links in the show notes, but also our website, biteatatimebooks.com, includes all of the links for our show, including to our Patreon to support the show and YouTube, where we have special behind the narration of the episodes. We're part of the Bite at a Time Books Productions Network. If you'd also like to hear a book by the author, check out the Bite at a Time Books podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Today we'll be talking about the monuments and commemoration of Robert Louis Stevenson. United Kingdom The Writers' Museum near Edinburgh's Royal Mile devotes a room to Stevenson, containing some of his personal possessions from childhood through to adulthood. A bronze relief memorial to Stevenson, designed by the American sculptor Augustus St. Gaudens in 1904, is mounted to the Moray Isle of St. Giles Cathedral, Edinburgh. St. Gaudens' scaled-down version of this relief is in the collection of the Montclair Art Museum. Another small version depicting Stevenson with a cigarette in his hand rather than the pen he holds in the St. Giles Memorial is displayed in the Nichols House Museum in Beacon Hill, Boston. In the West Princes Street Gardens below Edinburgh Castle, a simple upright stone is inscribed RLS, a man of letters, 1850 to 1894, by sculptor Ian Hamilton Finlay in 1987. In 2013, a statue of Stevenson as a child with his dog was unveiled by the author Ian Rankin outside Collington Parish Church. The sculptor of the statue was Alan Harriet, and the money to erect it was raised by the Collington Community Conservation Trust. Stevenson's house Scarivore at the head of Alum Chine was severely damaged by bombs during a destructive and lethal raid in the Bonamouth Blitz. Despite a campaign to save it, the building was demolished. A garden was designed by the Burnamouth Corporation in 1957 as a memorial to Stevenson, on the site of his Westbourne house, Scarivore, which he occupied from 1885 to 1887. A statue of the Scarivore Lighthouse is present on the site. Robert Louis Stevenson Avenue in Westbourne is named after him. In 1994, to mark the 100th anniversary of Stevenson's death, the Royal Bank of Scotland issued a series of commemorative one-pound notes, which featured a quill pen and Stevenson's signature on the obverse, and Stevenson's face on the reverse side. Alongside Stevenson's portrait are scenes from some of his books and his house in Western Samoa. Two million notes were issued, each with a serial number beginning RLS. The first note to be printed was sent to Samoa in time for their centenary celebrations on 3rd December 1994. United States The Stevenson House, at 530 Houston Street in Monterey, California, formerly the French Hotel, memorializes Stevenson's 1879 stay in the old Pacific capital, as he was crossing the United States to join his future wife, Fanny Osborne. The Stevenson House Museum is graced with a bass relief depicting the sickly author writing in bed. Spyglass Hill Golf Course, originally called Pebble Beach Pines Golf Club, was renamed Spyglass Hill by Samuel F. B. Morse, 1885-1969, the founder of Pebble Beach Company, after a place in Stevenson's Treasure Island. All the holes at Spyglass Hill are named after characters and places in the novel. The Robert Louis Stevenson Museum in St. Helena, California, is home to over 11,000 objects and artifacts, the majority of which belonged to Stevenson, Opened in 1969, the museum houses such treasures as his childhood rocking chair, writing desk, toy soldiers, and personal writings, among many other items. The museum is free to the public and serves as an academic archive for students, writers, and Stevenson enthusiasts. In San Francisco, there's an outdoor Robert Louis Stevenson Memorial in Portsmouth Square. At least six U.S. public and private schools are named after Stevenson, in the Upper West Side of New York City in Friendly, Minnesota, in Burbank, California, in Grandview Heights, Ohio, suburb of Columbus, 
in San Francisco, California, and in Merritt Island, Florida. There's an R.L. Stevenson Middle School in Honolulu, Hawaii, and in St. Helena, California. Stevenson School in Pebble Beach, California was established in 1952 and still exists as a college preparatory boarding school. Robert Louis Stevenson State Park near Calistoga, California contains the location where he and Fanny spent their honeymoon in 1880. A street in Honolulu's Waikiki District, where Stevenson lived while in the Hawaiian Islands, was named after his Samoan moniker, Tasatala. Samoa Stevenson's former home in Vilima, Samoa is now a museum, dedicated to the later years of his life. The Robert Louis Stevenson Museum presents the house as it was at the time of his death, along with two other buildings added to Stevenson's original one, tripling the museum in size. The path to Stevenson's grave at the top of Mount Vea starts at the museum. France The Cayman de Stevenson is a popular long-distance footpath in France that approximately follows Stevenson's route as described in Travels with a Donkey in the Savannas. There are numerous monuments and businesses named after him along the route, including a fountain of the town of St. Jean du Gard, where Stevenson sold his donkey Modestin and took a stagecoach to Ailes. Thank you for joining Bite at a Time Books behind the story today. While we answered some of the questions you have about one of your favorite classic authors, again, my name is Bree Carlisle, and I hope you come back next time when we answer more questions about one of your favorite classic authors. Don't forget to sign up for our newsletter at biteatatimebooks.com. Check out the show notes or our website, biteatatimebooks.com, for the links for our show.